Hello, everybody. Welcome, one and all. <laughs> all the new subs, thank you so much for being here. All my old ones, thank you so much for being here. All the compliments, everything, you guys are bloody fantastic. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, we have a very full show here. <laughs> I think I did it again. I over-researched. I'm going to leave some stuff out, I think, but I have some hysterical stuff you guys are going to want to stick around and I have pictures you haven't seen I have like funnies you haven't heard I have it all so let's get to it shall we okay so anyone who doesn't know I do all of my stuff like in chapter forms and after each chapter we have what I call commercials which are just funny things parodies anything I find that's hysterical and I share it at the end, we're going to have Thomas, of course, and um, a sub uh, got me on to uh, one person that is just absolutely hysterical. I can't wait to share that. But before we do that, let's just get to the chapter. So it's Here We Go Again, The Bump, and Princess Charlotte outs Rochel out of the mouths of babes, <laughs> Artificial and Invisibet's very first portraits. Yep. And new bump picks. So we're going to start with this little article I found online. I was like, what is this? Okay. Shocking truth revealed. Megan's son Archie kept away from royal family. Okay. So I tend to like to go back in time and look at it with the future or present's eyes. So anyways, we're going to go back in time. Okay. Okay. So let's just do that. <laughs> in a surprising revelation, Princess Charlotte inadvertently disclosed some shocking details about Meghan's son Archie during a 2019 outing with members of the royal family. According to Charlotte's classmates, the princess described Archie as a quiet baby who rarely cried or moved. What's more, Meghan apparently did not allow Charlotte or her brother, Prince George, to touch or approach the newborn royal. The revelation left the Welsh siblings feeling saddened and questioning the authenticity of Archie's existence as they had limited opportunities to interact with him. Meanwhile, the ever-supportive Kate Middleton was seen cheering on her husband, Prince William, as he participated in a polo match. Later in the day, she would continue to show her support as Prince William took part in the Outsourcing Incorporated Royal Charity Polo Cup 2023 at Garth's Polo Club. This event is expected to be quite different from the charity match back in 2019, where Kate and Meghan joined forces to watch William and Prince Harry play together on a Mom's Day Out. <laughs> yeah, okay. At the time, tensions were high between the two couples due to disagreements over bridesmaids' dresses and reported tensions surrounding Meghan's behavior towards staff. The joint appearance of the Sussexes and the Cambridges at the King Power Royal Charity Polo Day in July 2019 marked the first time they had been seen together as a family since Archie's birth. It was a rare occasion for Meghan and Kate to be seen together outside of official engagements attended by the entire royal Families such as Trooping the Color. Rumors of a rift between the two couples had been circulating for months, especially after Meghan and Harry decided to separate from the Wales and their joint Royal Foundation charity. Additionally, it was revealed that they had taken one of the most respected aides with them. Yep. According to Harry's memoir, tensions between Kate and Meghan had also arisen during the Royal Summit in 2018, where they clashed over lip gloss and bridesmaids' dresses. <laughs> the group attempted to resolve their differences in a meeting that June, during which Kate expressed her hurt feelings after Meghan mentioned having baby brain. Speculation of a falling out intensified when it was announced that Harry and Meghan would be moving away from Kensington Palace to Frogmore Cottage. Sources close to the situation revealed that Kate and Ma Meghan are very different individuals with little in common, but they have made efforts to get along. Reports also suggested that Meghan felt overshadowed by Kate's position as the number one royal. I believe that. 
Royal author Tom Quinn claimed that Meghan often clashed with Kensington Palace staff over the attention she believed she deserved. According to the book Finding Freedom, the distant and polite relationship between Meghan and Kate was evident in their standoffish behavior at the charity polo match. Despite being photographed next to each other with their children, the two seemed to barely exchange a word. In one picture, Megan stood at a distance from Kate and her family, cradling her newborn and planting a tender kiss on his head. This shocking revelation about Archie's limited interaction with the royal family has left many questioning the dynamics within the monarchy. As the story unfolds, it remains to be seen how this revelation will impact the relationships between the Cambridges and the Sussexes and whether efforts will be made to bridge the gap between them. Okay, so this is the day that they're talking about, right? I'm the one that put the emoji there. <laughs> But um, as soon as I Googled, this is what came up. The Duchess of Sussex made her first public outing with two-month-old Archie at husband Prince Harry and brother-in-law Prince William's charity polo match on Wednesday. It was a warm, sunny day, and Meghan mainly stayed under the shade of a tree with her son in her arms. All right, then. Let's look at some pics. So I just wrote, Rochelle, you were there for hours. Where is Archie's hat? Doesn't he need a bottle? Doesn't he need a nappy change? Where is your diaper bag? Why are you holding him like a sack of potatoes? Why doesn't he cry or move? This is not how a real mother holds their child. This is not the look on a new mom's face. What the Sam hell is this? Look at her face. So I'm going to get to another picture and then I have something really quick to say. A picture is worth a thousand words. MM looks smug AF and PH is looking all kinds of wrong. Totally. And this is what um, little Charlotte was telling her classmates about. They weren't allowed to come around Archie. Archie didn't move or cry or nothing. Look at Catherine's face, you guys. <laughs> oh my God. Like seriously, look at her face. Oh my God. So of course I have to put this photo in because it was all about this polo match. And this was the first close up of Arch Official at the polo match. Um, Cause I had shown this before in another video, but that's what that article was about. It was about this day. And it's amazing to me now that like Charlotte's classmates are saying this, that she said this like, Holy moly. And you know what? Some stuff online isn't real. I get that. And some stuff is. But this is something that could be very probable. You know what I mean? Like, Charlotte would easily say to her classmates, oh, I couldn't, you know, get to hold the baby because little girls always want to hold the baby and stuff like that, right? Like, I could see that happening. If it hasn't happened, okay, that's fine. But that's for you guys to decide. I guess I just bring you the info. However, looking at this picture, hmm, seems pretty evident to me <laughs> that the child isn't moving, right? So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go through, because some people haven't seen it, but I found a couple new things and I found some new bump pics, yep, but I'm going to go through three instances that are very disturbing, and, but first I'm going to show one picture of another time. So, we all remember this, right? Yeah. In my home country, she pulled these shenanigans. I'm so glad the RCMP quit on them. Because you know what they were doing? Honest to God. They were getting them to run for McDonald's and shit. What? You're supposed to be security. Those are our policemen. And you're making them go for McDonald's? Yeah, they said F you and quit. And I'm, I'm bloody proud of them. Because <laughs> fuck that. Excuse my French, but uh-uh, not happening. And we had to pay for that shit. Anyway, <clears throat> before I get into the instances, I have clips for everything. I wanted to show a little clip from Lady C discussing Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just going to put it on. Uber, Popcorn Royal stated that he spoke to Jessica, Megan's friend, and she stated that she... And no one bullied Princess Charlotte and everything has been fabricated. What is your opinion? <laughs> denial, denial, denial. Jessica Mulroney, my dear, didn't have to have overheard it. 
just because they were at the same event didn't mean that they were cheek and jowl. I have received information in writing from people associated with Givenchy who were there and who witnessed it. I'd sooner believe them than anything Jessica Mulroney might deny. Let's <laughs> I love Lady C. Okay, so what I decided to do, there's three main instances where I believe that it's pretty much proof that she was wearing a bump, okay? One of them was in, <clears throat> excuse me, London on the uh, International Women's Day, I believe. Um, the next one was in Mayhew, and then, of course, Birkenhead. Now, I um, do have some a few different things that um, are normally out there, as I usually do. Um, so I'm going to show those, and we're just going to, yeah, just get to it. Okay, the first one is International Women's Day, and I wrote stilettos, Rachel. Good grief. Anyways, it's not the clip I know you guys think is coming where her bumps sway side to side. No, it's a different one. So I'm going to just play it. Okay, maybe I'm a dense banana, but I hadn't seen this clip before, you guys. Let me know if you guys have where she sits down and pff, it's gone. The bump's gone. Like, I... I saw the one of this particular day of it swaying back and forth, but I hadn't seen this particular clip before. So I thought if I hadn't, maybe some of you haven't. So here it is. <laughs> okay, next. Okay, number two is Mayhew. Um, and this is her arriving. So I point to the belly. You can see it. It's not real huge or anything, right? This is her leaving, guys. I don't know about you, but I've had three babies, and my babies did not grow um, two months in um, an hour. <laughs> if they did, I'd be freaking freaking out and saying, get this alien out of me. <laughs> what the hell is this shit? You know what? I've seen these pictures so many times, you guys, and honestly, it still floors me that she did this stuff. So, I don't know. Anyway... I'm going to put a little clip on, like I always do. Well, not that I always do, I guess, but with these I will. Okay, I found this clip, you guys. And you're going to hear it, and they're going to slow it down so you can hear it again. And watch her hand. Watch her hand. You can hear it. And look at it inflate. Yep. Yep. Then he's going to slow it really down, and I'm going to mute it because it's an awful sound. <laughs> but watch really close. Like, I know most of you have probably seen it, right? But this was a really cool one because, like I said, it was slowed down so we could really see it. Like, there it is. Blink. There it is. <laughs> oh, man. She is just unreal. Her. Wow. So, okay, so first I thought, you know what, I'm just going to see what Google says. So I put, put Google and this is what popped up. The mother-to-be was pictured cradling her tummy as she arrived for the engagement. Mm-hmm. Okay, then. Okay, so now it's me. <laughs> so this is her arriving. And I said, no excess swelling. Hmm, okay. Them leaving, and I'm pointing, where is the bump? Because I, you sh I showed you what Google showed us, that bump, right? And in this picture, or I said, Arch Official is escaping her already. <laughs> Somebody is still trying to tell me that that was her knee or something. Look at where it's positioned. That was not her knee. <laughs> Sorry, it wasn't. And they like, well, they, she can't walk with it around her ankles. And I'm, but it's not around her ankles. That's the thing, right? It, it stopped short of just popping out underneath the dress, but she had that slit on the side. So, yeah. But anyways, um, I don't know if you guys have seen her coming and going, like um, tape recording or whatever of it. I hadn't. But um, three months ago, I went searching, and I found one from, like, oh, my God, years ago in a magazine of all things. So, anyways, it's that I don't have that video up anymore, but.
but I'm going to use that video to show you the uh, what I caught on the camera because yeah I hadn't seen it before so let's check it out have you guys seen this before look at that look at that there is no bump there you guys none look I have not seen this anywhere else online except for in, it was in this in this magazine of all things I can't remember the name of it, it it's one I haven't seen before isn't that just shocking I had not seen this footage before. I found this three months ago, you guys. It's just like, what? <laughs> okay, so somebody took a snapshot, obviously, of their Netflix special, or I don't know if this was in it. It's something to do with Netflix. Anyways, I had never seen it because I refused to watch their stupid show. So I don't know if you've seen it. So anyways, I have a couple pictures, and here's one. Does that even look normal, you guys? Look at that. I mean, I'm not even kidding. Look at how far the bump is away from the breasts now. And, and you should it right high up. Somebody points to this white thing, and, uh, and I'll show you in a sec. But honest to God, look at that. Isn't that crazy? It's a close-up shot. That is not normal. That does not look normal. So somebody put this out, and they were like, yep, that's what it is. <laughs> Is it? I don't know, but I do know that that was not a normal bump. Nope. <laughs> so because of pics like this one and this one <laughs> is the reason for what's coming next. I couldn't help it. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I said, Rosa was such a good customer with Artificial. She got a great deal for her segment, second pregnancy, presenting Invisibet's very first picture. <laughs> ah, I love it. <laughs> Look what I found, you guys. Archie and Little Bet's official portraits. <laughs> oh, my God, you guys. online and I almost died. I was like, this is too good to put on my my <laughs> my community tab. I have to put this in a video. Oh my god, is that not hysterical? People are so and funny. <laughs> Love it. Love it. And then I found this. What a little piece of gossip this is. This is the doctor that apparently supposedly um, helped with her birth of a little bit. The one that closed her practice right away. But she's still around because she's doing birth doula training now. <laughs> like, you can't make this shit up. <laughs> Honest to God. And underneath, look at that. She's named in four separate lawsuits. And that is true, you guys, because they had all the information underneath it. But I was not going to bore you with that. Like, I was bored to tears even looking at it myself. Just know that she is literally, yes, involved in four separate lawsuits. Maybe that's why she closed it down, but I don't know. So this is the woman that gave birth <laughs> a little bit or helped give birth. I don't freaking know anymore. <laughs> I just showed you guys a portrait of a moon bump and said that was the portrait. So what do I know? I'm a lunatic, I think. Oh my god. This is gonna be a fun, fun video, guys. Okay, alrighty. Let's have some commercials. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. I was having so much fun. I forgot about this. This was so important. I'm not gonna play the whole clip, but there's something in here that yeah, we need to hear. So yeah, I'm gonna put it put it on now. Visited feeding Birkenhead Citizen Supermarket. Megan's moon bump was caught slipping down below her knees. At the time, she sported a purple dress that was much looser around the midsection, making her stomach appear much larger than days before. On this day, Megan was telling the crowd that she was six months and due in April. At six months pregnant, her magical belly could disappear, so she could squat knees together and get back up without assistance. The strangest thing is that she's always touching her belly from below. That's not how pregnant women rest their hands. Pregnant women like to place their hands on top of their moon bump. 
Megan was always holding it from the bottom to make sure that her fake belly didn't fall due to her squatting and forgetting to act like a pregnant woman. Interestingly, royal author Valentin Lowe was there that day with the Sussexes. He sure witnessed the bump, collapse in Birkenhead. The fact that he's not spoken or written about it is proof that super injunction does exist. That was what I wanted you guys to hear. Did you hear what he said about the super injunction? I am convinced, convinced that it, there is one. I'm convinced of that. But I'm thinking, that, like I said last time, it's a very big possibility that that's going to be lifted in the spring. So the fact that um, a journalist saw this and everything and isn't speaking about it says a hell of a lot. And I've also read online, too, that um, a lot of the journalists in that go into um, the YouTube comments but uh, anonymously, guys, and he and they're on our side. It's so bizarre. I, I actually read that, and I believe it, too. Anyway, I'll get to the commercials now. I apologize, but I really, it was so important to hear that, I thought. There were several conversations about what gender the baby might be. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What? So who is having that conversation? <laughs> my father, my brother, the Queen. People would ask, do we know? Do we know? And we always have planned that the baby would decide that for itself. But to presume uh, that, that we could know. What? Yeah. Uh, and I love my brother, and I love my family, and I love my grandmother, and we love the baby. But disgusting. It's uh, we need to modernize the conversation. Oh. Uh, we want you to consider trying this idea for your brand. Our goal is to make people not hate you. I have a friend of mine who is a specialist and I invited him to talk to you for a few minutes. Let me get him on the Zoom as he is waiting on the video call bridge. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the body language guy. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? My name is Jesus Enrique Rosa. And what did you say you do? I'm the body language guy. Okay, got it. <laughs> Let's get down to it. Awesome. Let me get you up to speed. We have been discussing that less is more concept. We know our princess has been working hard at, um, stuff. What do you advise to help her popularity? I thought you said it was my husband who needed the improvement. I am sure he meant the both of us. Now, you might be wondering, what does not talking have to do with popularity? I never really thought about it. <laughs> but there is one huge fact about our perception that is mystery. Mystery is something that every single person should be able to handle in a healthy way. This is why I need the security. <laughs> you should never reveal everything about you on one sitting because you'll instantly become boring. <laughs> but what about never getting a second chance to make a first impression? Sometimes you only get one shot, and I like to be as comprehensive as possible. <laughs> because every personal aspect of your life that you reveal reduces your mystery. Wake up. <laughs> Terribly sorry. It is this California sunny weather. I am not used to it yet. You risk being seen as a privileged whining brat, especially if you have millions in the bank, all the fame in the world, and act like you've been struggling. Was that directed at me? My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas, and it will always be a pleasure, my body language body. Much love and bliss. Aren't commercials the best? <laughs> okay, so this chapter is Costa Rica and Kids Awards, or lack thereof, and Blind Items. It's Aco's Water Cooler Gossip. <laughs> Yipper. It never stops, you guys. Listen. Controversial revelations surrounding Meghan and Harry's Costa Rica vacation rented kids exposed. In a shocking turn of events, new information has emerged about Meghan and Harry's supposedly idyllic family vacation to Costa Rica. While their PR agency painted a picture-perfect paradise, it seems there is more to this story than meets the eye. Let's dive into the intriguing revelations that have surfaced. According to witnesses at the airport and reports from Costa Rica's largest English language newspaper, the Tico Times, Meghan and Harry visited the country from December 14th to the 20th. 
However, airport staff did not spot any children accompanying them on the flight. This raises questions about the authenticity of the family vacation images that flooded the media. The plot thickens when we examine the flight tracker data, which indicates a private jet flying from Santa Barbara to Costa Rica. The plane's trustee is Wells Fargo Bank Northwest, and the registered agent is Maricorp LLC, a company known for handling business transactions. Huh. Both Paracorp and Wells Fargo Northwest have offices in California and Nevada. <coughs> Adding to the intrigue, it was discovered that the plane used for the journey was formerly owned by Aspen IC, a company reportedly purchased by Harry earlier this year. What? The current ownership of the plane remains unclear, but airport staff confirm that only Harry and Meghan dis disembarked with no sign of any children. These revelations cast doubt on the authenticity of the family vacation. Were the children actually present or were they conveniently borrowed for a photo opportunity at Playa Canela Beach? Paula M., oh, a friend of the Director of Tourism of Central America, shared some interesting insights in a video. Oh, I didn't realize that was there. I apologize. She claims that Megan had requested local papers to report their presence and was disappointed when they didn't emphasize their Sussex titles. She also mentioned that there are pictures of Harry and Meghan with children, but intriguingly, the children were not actually with them. She suggested that Harry left on the morning of the third day, leaving Meghan behind. According to someone I covered, Meghan's thirst for global attention drives her to seek coverage from every paper in every part of the world. It seems she craves narcissistic supply and has an insatiable need for attention, even during her vacations. These revelations have sparked widespread, speculate, widespread speculation and debate. I put that on the bottom. <laughs> because I'm funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Isn't that... Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, uh, this has come out now, so there has been enough time for people to have gone, you know, back and through logs and all that kind of stuff. And um, I, would, I, I, I have heard this more than once. I've seen this more than, well, actually, many, many times. Um, I brought it up once, but uh, this seems pretty uh, legit. I mean, the paper's saying it. They have backlogs. They have all that stuff. So, yeah, I I'm convinced anyways, you guys. Like, they didn't bring kids there. There's no way. There is no stinking way. But that's just my opinion, and I've known to be wrong. Well, have I? <laughs> just kidding. So I just have like two little things and then I'm going to get into the blind items. Um, I do have one clip to go with that as well. But this really makes sense, you know. Stand up and fight against the R word and, you know, of African women, um, Harold. <laughs> and then complain that his brother had a bigger room in the palace. Oh yeah, he'll do that. Like he's such a coward, this guy. I can't stand him. This was interesting, you guys, because it's been confirmed that they signed a Netflix deal and Oprah and the Harry Apple TV series before they quit the family. I knew this. I just knew it. So they did have income. They, they got paid, you guys, before they left. They're such lying assholes. Look at them on freaking Oprah. Oh, he got cut off and everything. Then it shows that not only did he not get cut off, the king was still giving him money. And now it, it, it's saying that, well, they obviously got... um money ahead of time right from these people what in the mm, makes me so pissed off they did know they would be getting lucrative book deals and they did plan oprah tell all but this pathetic loser who never had to pay for anything for 35 years was sitting on 20 million pounds and 80 million pounds receivables and was throwing a tantrum wanting the taxpayers who were barely making ends meet after the pandemic to pay for his security. What the f People literally cannot afford to pay rent, heat their homes, or afford enough food. And these two garbage human beings living in their 14-bedroom mansion, sitting on 100 million pounds, are still suing taxpayers to fund their lifestyle. Holy shit, you guys. I apologize. I, I should stop cursing. It's just a little too much sometimes because I, I guess because I researched this for so long, like, 
I have so much stuff that isn't that I'm not showing you guys that I've read like two days, right? And I just picked the stuff that is the most interesting to me at the time. I'll probably make another video with the other stuff later. But honestly, this stuff that we're finding out, we already knew, right? We already knew, but we didn't know, no. Does that make sense? Like, to find out that, it, mm, I thought that for sure they had the Oprah interview because, you know, Oprah's wily and schemy that way, right? But to know that they had all this other shit too, un flippin' believable. I don't believe a singular word that comes out of these guys' mouth. Not a singular word. If they say and, I won't believe it. I, I won't believe a single bloody word in any language on this planet. Ugh. So, um, the blind items I have, I do have pictures that go with them, except for this one, but I'm going to read it anyways. The illiterate one and her husband are in a big money crunch, so are choosing to not renew the contracts of people who know what they're doing, because those deals cost the most. To replace them, they have brought in at least one intern from college who they can pay minimum wage rather than mid-six figures. We all know the anti-lawyer is always dead on. So this is January 31st. I am, you guys, hmm, I just have a feeling this is the year I just do. I do. Because so much stuff, they can't afford to shut people up anymore. Like, I read it in the last one, remember? When, I, when they said, when he said, the guy said they cannot afford it to, to settle anymore. So people are going to have discovery. It's just a matter of time. So we've waited five years. We'll just wait a little longer and have fun while we're doing it. <laughs> okay, this one uh, was on Sunday, January 28th. The ginger-haired one will keep his head in the sand because there's nothing he can say or do that will make his charity look good. So many charities in that region of the world are about land grabs or human trafficking. It doesn't look like his was any different. He's leaving messes all over the world. And I'm sure we all know about this, right? Prince Harry was warned about our words and human rights atrocities in Africa carried out by rangers at charity months before, months before he was promoted to its board of directors. He knew about all this stuff, you guys. He flipping knew and has done jack shit about it. So I just wanted to read this one little piece. I'm not reading the whole article. And yes, that's me that put them on the bottom there. <laughs> okay. Prince Harry was warned about vicious R words and human rights abuse allegedly committed by rangers employed by a charity months before he was promoted to its board of director, directors. It is reported. Oh, man. The Duke of Sussex was sent shocking testimony of crimes against Baca tribes people in the Republic of Congo while serving as president of African Parks, a, conversa a conservation charity based in South Africa. The royal was asked by Survival International, which fights for the rights of the indigenous peoples, to use his influence and position to stop these abuse abuses being committed in a letter sent to both him and Meghan Markle in May last year. Absolutely nothing's been done or said. Not a thing. What pieces of shit these guys, these people are. Honest to God. All right, next one, guys. January 24. Some of these are a little bit older, but um, I haven't read them out, so. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that is not a look I was expecting. The illiterate one and her ginger-haired husband taking yet another Caribbean vacation to try and save their marriage. Wait. Did they actually pose smiling while directly next to the CEO best friend of the Nickelodeon Predator producer? The same producer who, despite his best friend being in charge, can't even get in the back door of the studio? But hey, it was a red carpet, so that's all that they cared about. And this is about Brian Roberts da uh, and Dan Schneider. And of course, there they are. I just had to put a picture just to go with the blind item because I, I, I try to do, like... I, well, anyway, in my head, I've thought, you know, okay, if I'm going to do blind items, I'd like to have something to go with it, right? So that we know what we're talking about. And that's what we're talking about. I'm telling you, you guys, honest to God, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not. But there are so many P files that are high up. It is sickening. Or they do horrible, dastardly deeds like, you know, he does. Harry. It's just unstinking believable. You know that? It just really is. 
So this was really interesting. Uh, February 1st, the illiterate one and her husband thought he was a block for a recording award. <laughs> and then he didn't even get a nomination. They See, I knew about that, but I didn't know about this stuff. They had a huge party planned. They still haven't finalized the after party for the movie awards thing who don't want them there. Oh, my God. Their staffers have fled. The football organization said they don't have room for them at the big game. OMG. Their favorite charity is a front for indiscriminate kick. Whoa. R word and sick trafficking. Well, you know what I mean. That's the one we just talked about, okay? But they did manage to get it. <clears throat> to a premier impose with an enabler of a SEX predator. Great January for them. The company you keep. Company you keep. So I found this. Yes, I put that in there. <laughs> Living legends of local Looney Tunes, I said. <laughs> he says, I'd like to thank my crazy wife for teaching me how to buy awards. It's true. Anyway, couldn't buy this one, though. Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, book spare is available with a recording of more than 15 hours. Oh, God, he must love listening to himself. And now that recording could nab the royal a coveted Grammy Award. Yeah, it didn't. Prince Harry has been <laughs> tipped to win a Grammy Award for voicing his tell-all memoir, Spare. The Duke of Sussex released his memoir January 10th, and Spare soon became the fastest non-selling fiction book since UK records began. Eh. However, there is now reportedly a chance the father of two could win a Grammy Award for his audiobook recording. I think even Hollyweird knew it would be too much if they gave him a Grammy. <laughs> really? Come on. As if. <sighs> so, I have a clip of another blind item, you guys. It doesn't have to do with them, but Prince Andrew? Well, maybe there is there one to do with them? I can't. Honestly, you guys, I'm sorry. I can't remember. Ah, but it's good. I know that much. So I'm going to put it on. And um, yeah, we're going to listen. Actually, I think there might be two, but we'll see. Out of Prince Andrew, blind item. Trigger warning. Uh, this blind item alleges Prince Andrew committed a crime that I absolutely believe. And this is all related to that Pizza Express in Woking. And when Prince Andrew said, I didn't mm, with teenager, I was home after Pizza Express in Woking. So it was this particular interview uh, where Prince Andrew stated the Pizza Express thing or referenced it. Uh, and this is ahead of Princess Beatrice's nuptials, her royal wedding. The excuse. And this is again about Prince Andrew allegedly mm, one of Beatrice's own friends as a child. With the upcoming nuptials, there's been a lot of back and forth with friends on this side of the Atlantic. That leads to golden gossip. It can also lead to some shocking revelations. Several months back, this royal p-file used an outlandish excuse as an alibi. The excuse seemingly was pulled out of nowhere and no one believed a word he said. It was interesting he chose that particular establishment, Pizza Express Restaurant in Woking, because a friend of his offspring, Princess Beatrice, was going to be in the offspring's wedding until it was mentioned. The reason for pulling out, well, at one point in time, he did take the kids there and also some kids' friends. This would have been about the time he was allowing his way underage daughter, Princess Beatrice, to spend time with the billionaire pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein. A female friend of the offspring was long for one of the dinners to the establishment mentioned and said the royal cornered her in the female restroom and groped her and did stuff with his fingers while trying to kiss her and telling her that he knew what she needed. This is a child. This is a child. Well, this was going on, someone started banging on the door because they needed to use the restroom and she managed to get away. Several times after that night, whenever she would see him, he would always try and kiss her, but ne he never got close enough to do what he did that night. When she heard the name of the restaurant, that was it for her. Apparently, there was a huge argument about her going to the police all these years later, and this is what has led to her departure from the wedding party. Please go to the police. Please do. I thought I'd put this on just after that last item. It was quite a lot while I have a little chat. Now, um, uh, whilst I'm a very funny channel and lighthearted, I am not afraid, you guys, to bring you the, the, the big stuff. And I think if anyone has watched any of my videos, <laughs> you'll know I do not shy away. I will not shy away. So that's why I chose to put that Prince Andrew one in. Everybody has a right to their opinion. I respect everybody's opinion. I have my own opinion. And I think I have a couple of videos that explain that opinion. <laughs> but 
I don't want anything nasty in the comments, but I'm just, that's all I'm saying, okay? Um, I personally believe that, but that's just me. Me, okay? Anyway, um, <clears throat> that being said, there is more to come and there is more holy crap for you to come because that's how I am. My videos always get better as they go on, you guys. So, okay, um, I'm going to put on a commercial that is hysterical that a sub told me about. And then I have one more quick chapter and then we'll watch Thomas. I think I'm going to run late. I could cut it here, but I don't think you guys want me to, do you? <laughs> okay, let's just go on. You should have seen the look on their faces when I bought in that hot sauce. It was a mess. You know what hot sauce is, right? Comes like in a little bottle. Yeah, so I thought they had the cooking under control, but when I opened up the pantry, there was just a bunch of pepper and vinegar, so I had to bring the basil, of course, and show them how to cook, honey. I doubt that. Now, let's talk about finances. How much money them people got over there? I need to know what I'm competing with. Oh, they have you beat, sis. Racks on top of racks. For every dollar you have, they probably have about 20 million. How much of it do you have access to to pay for this interview? They left me with nothing but my dreams of being an actress. As a matter of fact, like, don't you have your, your own network? You know, I could use a role or two. Uh, I could do an audition right now. You know, I could give a really mean Shaniqua or um, I could do a uh, Karen. What, what do you prefer? Neither damn one. What if I give you the tea on their underground dungeon with all the slaves? I'm in. Someone draw up a contract. Well, I'm going to need that lead role. Let's do this. Where do you want to begin? Let's get your redneck husband in here. I need you two to spill the beans on the race bait stuff. That is what's going to sell this interview. And if you need to cry, go for it. Just give me a heads up so I can get the close up. Prince Furball, you first. Well, it all started when I put the Badu rag or what is it? The Mountain Dew rag on my baby's head. And he started getting waves. And they were all jealous because, of course, they never seen anything like it. How many waves we're talking here? One, two waves? <sighs> I really hate to say it, but his hair got nappity. Nappy, honey. Yeah, nappy, nappy. Yes, babe. Sorry. What the fuck? Yeah, I know. It was quite amazing. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Where did either one of you learn to tie a damn do rag? My mom taught us everything through Facebook Messenger. It really helps. Mm, 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 mm. I'm ghetto now. So two white people with a tablespoon of black made a baby with hair that's snapper than that on the back of my neck? Well, if you haven't noticed, I am fully black. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trapped in a white man's body. That's why her and I were attracted to one another, you know, because together we're blacker than Akon's knees. Tell me what Tyler Perry is feeding y'all in that closet he has y'all living in. Tell her what I made for dinner. No, you tell her, babe. No, come on, tell her. It was amazing. You tell she her. She made me the best fried chicken liver I have ever had in my life. It was succulently slapping. Do you need me to bitch slap the taste into you? What the, I wish a motherfucker would. Oh my God, you guys. I was laughing so much, I forgot to shut it off. <laughs> Honest to God, that thing had me cracking up. I've only saw it once before because I wanted to do it as cold as possible, right? I had to watch it to make sure it was good, but oh my God, the second time was even better. <laughs> it really was. I loved it. Loved it. Okay. I'm not very politically correct, but you can tell it was black people who, who were doing it. It doesn't matter. Anyway. Let's go back in time to 2019 and read a hysterical satire piece and another picture of Rochel. Okay, I decided I was going to put another one out. It's kind of graphic, but I'm just warning y'all, okay? And the piece I'm going to read is hysterically funny, and it's not that long, and I have, they, they actually put in memes, it's just hilarious. And they mix up London and the States and all kinds, but it's on purpose. So just, just know that, but it's funny. It's funny, funny. So let's go and uh, enjoy it. So this is just the start of it. And it's just a meme and that's how they started it. And it's just hilarious because it says, and I'm the <laughs> flipping guinea pig because of these two twats. <laughs> that kid says that. And then he, uh, Harry's, yeah, nice one, Megs, you're a genius, babes. And she's like, they bought it, has the stupid idiots, more publicity and more money in the bank. This is so easy. And it's, this article's about the Great Fire of London? No, Cape Town. Yeah, or the States. <laughs> the year was 2019, late one September night. 
Harry and Megan's gaff in the Ghani Cape Town glowed with an orange light. Archie's heater was on fire. The flames soon began to spread. Archie the toddler was upstairs. He was asleep in his comfy bed. Before too long, the walls caught fire. There billowed out black smoke. The fire made such a loud noise, Archie suddenly awoke. He woke up Mumsy and Daddy Pops and all his family, and he got them all out of there. He called out for the fireman and called out for the mayor, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> the fireman saw the other huts nearby and said, Let's knock these down or else they'll catch fire too. He said, just hang about. The fire's not that bad. You know, we could soon put that out if everyone had a really good slash. <laughs> so they pulled down their trousers and tried their very best to put the flames out with their wee. But the flames just grew higher and higher. Sure enough, they spread. And soon enough, of all, the whole of South Africa was on fire. Oh, no. When Bonnie Prince Charlie was told about this, he was really upset. He realized that the fire posed a very serious threat. He decided that he must help, and so he put on his brogues and his double-breasted suit, and he marched out of Buckingham Palace towards the fire and smoke. He helped some firefighters who had started to despair, and everyone was really glad that the good Prince Charles was there. Mummy, fire! <laughs> Eventually, the wind died down. The fire died down, too. Cape Town would have to be rebuilt. There was much work to do. The damage caused would have been much, much less in the year 2019 if Dopey Archie had been playing with his toys instead of messing around and amusing himself with dodgy heaters. <laughs> Look, there are you guys in the court. Oh, my God. The Magical Mystery Tour. <laughs> oh my God. I read that and just laughed because they made such a big stinking deal about a fire that never was. <laughs> so this person <laughs> wrote a whole thing about this fire taking over Cape Town, but then... The mayor's Giuliani. <laughs> it's London and it's just, it's hysterical. Basically, just kind of showing that, you know, they're screwing the world over and it's just, it's funny. I thought it was funny. I really hope you guys did too because that's my sense of humor. I'm kind of quirky sometimes. It was just a hoot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Time for the picture. Let's go. From a corn actress to a writer on the bench, she's a very versatile girl. Where was her other leg? Oops. Okay, so guys, I had to cover up some stuff, obviously. Um, like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I've got oh, way, way, way worse, but I'm kind of afraid and I'm, you know, taking a risk. <laughs> Just so that I can get it out to you guys, to be honest, right? I just want to expose her. But anyway, um, yeah, so this is, what, picture number three, I think, now? I got three now, so. Yeah, anyways, I don't want to stay on this too long. It's already getting into 50 minutes, and I'm kind of freaking out a bit. <laughs> um, but I'm going to put on Thomas, and we're going to have a laugh. And we're just going to do that because he's so much fun and we just need to. And I hope you had a good time. I really enjoyed doing this video. It was fun. Um, yeah. Uh, th thank you. Thank you so, so much, you guys. Honestly, I just, I can't thank you enough. <laughs> um, I see I have a lot more viewers and subs. So anybody who's viewing it hasn't subbed yet. That would be, that would really make my day <laughs> if you did that. Um, it's free. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, whoo. I will see you guys in the next one and I'm just going to laugh with you and, uh, yeah, have a great day. Okay. Bye. But being that, being that we covered the news here, I got insides on the paparazzi and we heard about the next me gain award that's coming up next month. It's where she's getting an award for what, what, what is it? Uh, 
uh, uh, the batshit crazy uh, mentally <laughs> ill women's award. Yeah, something like that. But this time, she's going to have an escort by four men in pretty white coats <laughs> with beautiful, beautiful leather strap from made, definitely made to order, where she's going to be escorted in a private van with padded walls and blacked out windows to a beautiful, beautiful luxury resort in the hills called Notwell Foundation. <laughs> Notwell. <laughs> that rings a bell, doesn't it? Anyway, she will be heavily medicated and given colonics and enemas for the next 25 years, so she'll be happy. Thank you, folks, for tuning in to this breaking news alert. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week's edition of Bookmarks. Now, where did we leave off last week? Let's see. All right, let me take a look here. Ah, let's see, bunion remover, back hair remover, <laughs> wart remover, cold sore cream, tanning spray, black candles, <laughs> crab be gone spray, <laughs> knee pads, <laughs> Undercarriage deodorant spray, whiskey, <laughs> vodka, gin, and pick up STD test from the doctor. <laughs> Who the hell left their to-do list in my book? <laughs> Damn, that's just weird. I don't know where that came from. Somebody's shopping list. <laughs> <sighs> Someone needs to slap the shit out of me and wake me up from this horrible nightmare. <laughs> I must have been having a bad dream one night. I must have wrote that down in my sleep. Yep. <laughs> oh, boy. It was at that moment I realized how bad of a mistake I had made seeing my future mother-in-law the day of my wedding. She reminded me of the monster in the movie Predator. I was frozen, literally frozen, from the waist down. It was like being cooked alive and, and, God, Jesus, God, I, re I remember this. How did these notes get in here from my, from my wedding, from my wedding night? I, I just don't know. <laughs> All right, let's continue now. There wasn't enough hard alcohol at the reception to calm my mental state, nor was there any help available. But after my new wife pinched me and gave me the death stare with her blood-sucking, soul-draining, evil red snake eyes and told me I belong to her now until she has drained every ounce of everything that I've ever known out of me. And then she said, so smile and call me mommy and do what you're told. And then I peed myself. I remember that. I was scared shitless. Yeah, the night of my wedding when I saw her. Oh, God. It was horrible. Yeah. Let's continue now. It was at that moment I realized she, she lies, cheats, steals. She wasn't an orphan, an only child like she claimed. She wasn't poor, begging for salad or food or money. She never had to work a day in her life to survive. And now I was terrified knowing the truth of her hidden family and all their... I will try to escape, to seek them out one day, but I can't seem to shake this feeling of becoming a chicken farmer. Oh man, yeah. Yeah, I was faced with a hard decision, you know, when I found out all the truth about, about, about my, yeah, geez. I must have wrote this down and stuffed it in here one day. <laughs> All right. When her snake-like reptilian tongue entered deep into my backside, I knew she was the one special woman <laughs> that would rule me for the rest of my life. <laughs> and being tied to the bed, it felt like raptor claws tearing the hair out from the top of my head, which now, come to find out, I'm going to need a hair piece. Wow. That was definitely a nightmare that I had. Yeah, I, I wrote this down right when I woke up. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was a nightmare I had. 
I don't know what it's doing in, in this book I'm reading, but I mean, let's see. All right. It was almost like a sea hag witch had cast an evil spell over me, and I was blind and helpless to everything happening to me. I had lost all my friends, family, and job, and I felt like she stuck her witch's broom up my backside and turned me into a puppet show. <laughs> With no thoughts or actions of my own, I quickly then, I quickly learned to wear two pairs of underwear because her death stare now made me poop myself. Wow. Yeah, that would definitely be my ex. Yeah, I, I, it's another bad dream I was having. It just goes to show you folks. Oh my that God. One may not know what they do in their sleep while they're having these nightmares or what they go through in life, but you can always count on one thing. Always write your thoughts down and keep them on bookmarks. And please. Missing you from heartache, from the pain, taking my message, from the veins, speaking my lesson, from the brain, seeing issues.